Welcome to our course on SAP production planning. In this session, we will be discussing how to manage work center in SAP. So far we discussed what is production planning, what are the different production types, what is organization structure, and overview of master data for SAP production planning, detailed discussion on metal master and bill of materials, and then fundamentals of work centers. So here we'll discuss in detail about work centers. So work centers determine the place where the operation is executed. That is the basic definition we discussed. A work center contains like uh, default values that are copied or referred in operations when we create operations, when we create routings. Also there are costing details which are necessary for costing operations. And then there are scheduling and capacity data required for lead time scheduling and capacity planning. There are many details are there. The data in the work center are defined function wise. So there is a basic data screen. Here standard value key is defined. Standard value key defines one or more standard value parameters like a setup time, labor time, those things are defined in basic data view. In addition to this, we have name, description, who is responsible for work center, those details are available. And then in default screen, they contains the details which have to be defaulted in the operations when you are creating the routing. For example, control key, standard text key, wage data, those things have to be popped up as a default from work center, those details you can create here. And then we have capacity details. In capacity screen, we see that how the available capacity at work center is calculated. Hope you remember now our discussion on available capacity in the previous session. So that one, how to calculate that is in the capacity data and more than one capacity like machine capacity or labor capacity those things can be entered how to calculate this setup capacity how to calculate processing capacity through formulas and how the shift sequence has to be defined those parameters are defined in capacity data view and then we have a scheduling screen scheduling screen controls how to use the scheduling for the available capacity how to do the scheduling that's what we do here so here, uh, one capacity from each capacity screen, we can set as the basis for scheduling, in which is the bottleneck capacity we can define. And then we have the link to work center with the cost centers, where we are defining in the work center the activity types, there are formula, and from the cost elements are defined in the cost centers and the value of the activity types, we can calculate what is the cost of the operations. So costing view links the work center and the cost centers. Right. So these are the various screens which are available in work centers. How to create work center? Work center is created through the menu path shown here or simply T code CR01. Right. And after entering the CR01, let us go into the screen where we enter the plant. It is a plant where we want to create the work center. It is mandatory to assign the plant to each work center. And then we enter what is the work center. It may be alphanumeric name. Here we give like you know, SG501 or it may be 1234 or it may be 123, maybe 123-1. Like that we can give it, which is to denote the work center. And then we have the work center category. Work center category is a control function which is used to ensure that only relevant screens are eventually available during work center creation. For that, work center category is used. For example, 0001 defines the machine category. 007 means like a production line. According to that, then we can have the screens which are defined. Those things are controlled in the configuration of the work center category. And then we have the option to copy the details from plant or reference work center. So here we can select the checkbox, either plant or the reference work center, so that creation of the work centers will may be made easy. So if you give the reference of the plant and work center, system will take the default values which are coming from those work centers. So time to create the work center will be saved. But please take care that during this step, you have to update the required details in the new work center what you are creating. Just either copying and keep it, that may lead to some problem. Please be careful on this. We go into the screen where we are seeing basic data, default values, capacities, scheduling, costing. There are five tabs normally available in work centers. 
Now let us click on the basic data. Now we are in basic data. When I have the basic data, we can enter what is the short description, the work center name. It is a lathing machine, painting unit. Like that, we can give what is the work center here. And then we give who is person responsible for the work center. So with this, in various reports, reports we can find out. We analyze the work center's details using this person responsible parameters. So each person will be assigned responsible each work center so that we can identify responsibilities clearly. And then we have usage. The usage is the detail which is listing out what are the tasks which has to be mentioned by the work center. It is a control function that controls what the work center is available for various other tasks. For example, here 00 means no task. 001 means only routing and production order. Like that is given. Normally, for production when you are creating, we used to have this usage 009, all task uh, types, right? That's what we will select. Then, in the basic data itself, when you scroll down, we are seeing this standard value key. So, standard value key is what? Standard value key defines um, the activities performed on the work center as well as the option to record them. For example, the activities like setup, activities like setup, or a machine time or labor time those are the things which are defined under this standard value key sap1 there are other keys also what we want we can configure as a default when you select sap1 as a standard value key we are seeing these details here so here we see that other options right that uh, uh, against the setup we see that two should be executed and then there will be a uh, activity like must be entered or there will be some option like no checking like that the parameters will be there if we mark must be entered means during creation of routing we need to enter the actual duration of the activity in the routing that is must and then when it is may not be entered should not be entered should be entered also various options like what kind of control we can have when we are entering the routing so according to the requirement the criteria for example some parameters are to be must be has to be entered there we have to select the must be entered here. So when you create routing, that value has to be put, then only the routing can be saved. Otherwise, routing cannot be saved. For some values, we may not, need not enter any details. There we can put it there, should not be entered. Like this, we can take it, right? So that is what the two should be and other things. And then we have the backplash. What is the backplash? Backplash is, hope you remember our discussion on backplash in Metal Master. Where is it? MRP2 view. Uh, that one is creating the backplash for the particular metal across all the work centers where it is required. But if you don't select the backplash there in Metal Master, we can select individual work center also. For example, some component, it may have to be backplash automatically consumed in some work centers. Some work centers should not be consumed. That is the case. We can select the option of work center. This also we discussed there in detail. Backplash can be selected in Metal Master or work center, routing like that. We discussed in various options. This is the option in and then we are having the next view which is the default views in default views we are having the values like control key standard text key those kind of details and have the control key that determines whether we have to perform an activity or task associated with the work center and how we are going to perform going to perform for example the work center controls may have functions like scheduling costing automatic goods received print confirmation those things if the control key is not having this checkpoint which is marked for example in the control key pp01 if a scheduling is not selected then this particular uh, operation with this work center schedule will not be carried out so if there is any scheduling problem you have to refer the control key also and check it what is the value which is there how to see the control key those things we discuss later and then we have this uh, costing if you don't activate costing costing will not happen also automatic goods is it we have to trigger it so that automatic goods is up this is normally used in the final operation of the routing right the various controls we can this is very important parameter the control key about control key we'll discuss more detail when you are discussing the routing at that time now just understand this is an important control function and then we have the the very various uh, unit of measurements for the standard values for example setup time what is unit of measurement we have to have for machine time what is unit of measurement we have for labor, what is the unit of measurement we have? We may have like minutes or hours 
or even days also we can give all right and then let us click on now you are in the capacity in capacity first you have to define what is the capacity category for example in the same machine we can use the machine also there may be labor also required so we'll have a capacity category of machine and capacity category of labor both we can enter so we have to start with this one capacity category here we see that we see that the machine capacity labor capacity 001 is the machine capacity here we can allocate capacities of different capacity categories to each work center and then we have the formula you can see here there are a lot of standard sap formula given here let us not try to create any customized formula because all the standard form formula will meet our requirement for example here we are having sap 005 which is calculating the capacity for setup requirements and there is sap 006 which is for machine requirement capacity like this we have some formula so we have to use this formula and to calculate how to do the setup time calculations how to do the processing time calculations for capacity purpose and then in the bottom you will see this kind of tab where we click the capacity header capacity header when you enter it now here we can enter what is the short text that is the what is the capacity name that we can enter it and then we have to see that what is the capacity planner group like during evaluation of capacities the capacity planner group can be one of the evaluation criteria i mean we have to do some analysis means we can use this parameter we have to do some analysis means we can use this parameter so that we can segregate the details according to the capacity group and then we have factory calendar the factory calendar is what we define at the plant level we can use them in the work centers if some work centers are having some different uh, calendar for example some work centers may not work today because of some power problem or something like that we need to create a separate uh, factory calendar for that and i have to assign to this and then what is the basic unit of measure for the work center so that will be coming as or we can define here hours means hr like that we can define and then we have the details like start time finish time that work center start time and finish time in the given example the work center starts at 6 o'clock finishes at 10 o'clock that is 22 hours and length of the break hope you remember during our available capacity discussion we have different breaks now here we are giving a total break as 1 hour 30 minutes i mean uh, two shifts no for 45, 45 minutes for each shift that's what we are giving as a break and then we have the capacity utilization which means this machine will be used 90% of the time that is the capacity utilization and there are four machines are there after entering all these things by pressing enter we will get the details like this what is we are getting operating time is 13 hours 9 minutes we are getting how it is calculated that is 6 hours to 12 hours 22 hours now that is totally 12 hours so that is sorry 16 hours right and that is 16 hours multiplied with 0 0.9 right uh, sorry that is 16 hours we reduce this one and a half hours so we are getting 14 and a half hours these 14 and a half hours 9% of 14 and a half hours is 13.05 hours that's what we get i repeat it we have a start time of 6 hours finish time of 22 hours total 16 hours 16 hours there is a break of one and a half hours so we have 14 and a half hours these 14 and a half hours we have capacity utilization which is 90% so 90% of 14 and a half hours is 13.05 hours now the number of individual capacity is 4. So 4 into 1305, we get this 52.2 hours. That is the available capacity. Okay, this is what we seen as an illustration in our previous uh, session. But now here we are seeing the capacity utilization additional parameter. Right, that's what we see. Then we have the relevant to finite scheduling. The left side, you now the bottom, we can say relevant to finite scheduling. This means the capacity uh, of this work center, the finite scheduling can be done. In, instead of infinite capacity, we can calculate the finite scheduling that's what we get from this tab I mean this uh, checkpoint of the finite scheduling I mean there is I mean there is a overload means system will tell the message there is a overload and if you have the overload that also we can mention here for example there is a five percent right the five percent will consider the was a overload this much overload can be allowed like that will give beyond that system will give a alarm or we can restrict also not to take the capacities and then we have the other details like long term planning. So what is the long term planning? The checkbox enables the system to consider the production line is available during long term planning. So long term planning is what it is a simulative planning of metal lens production. Like that we can get it. So these are all the various details we are entering the capacity. Now you press the back button in the SAP screen. We will go to the uh, screen where we are having 
that uh, let us enter the scheduling tab now we are having the scheduling tab where we enter the details like uh, capacity category where the scheduling has to be carried out and then the formula required for scheduling activities like sap 001 for setup formula sap 002 for processing formula and then we have the costing view in the costing view we have the start date and finish date of this cost center which is valid valid and is applied to this cost center that validity we have to enter and then enter what is the cost center assigned to this work center then here this is integration this is integration point between pp and costing please note that this is the integration between pp and fico I mean controlling where the work center is assigned to the cost center please note one important point here we can assign one cost center to multiple work centers but we cannot assign multiple cost center to one work center that you have to be careful and then de define the activity type activity type denotes the rate at which system calculate the cost for example for setup time there is some activity type for machine there may be activity type those things you can enter here for these there will be value defined in the cost center as a cost element activity price is entered based on this activity type and activity price using the formula system will calculate what is the cost of these operations and then we will we'll get the results what is the cost of calculating uh, operating this activity and then if you want to change anything in work center so we finish the uh, work center creation with the last page then we save it then work center is saved now we want to change something we can use a t code cr02 if you want to display something we use a t code cr03 now if you want to know that what is the total number of work centers what are the total work centers available in the plant we can use a t code cr05 where you enter the plant 4300 is an example shown here you can enter your plant code then the system will list out what are all the work centers which are available based on the plant capacity category who is responsible what is the description of the work center all those things will be displayed and then we want to know that any work center we want to do some analysis where and all it is used for example one work center may be used for various activities how they are used and where they are used so this one we can do it using the t code ca80 when you enter the ca80 and also what is the date on which that work which that work center has to be validated here we see this particular work center is used in two products hgmc training ip1001 hgmc training op0101 like these two products and what is the validity of that uh, work centers uh, routings and what is the uh, status of this routing what is the task list description all those things are available here right so so if at all if you want to take any maintenance of the resource center is overload capacity we want to see what is the impact of this work center in other areas this is the report which will be very much useful the same similar report we uh, saw no in a bom also what is that where used to list that is called what now cs15 now we are using ca80 for the work so in this session we discussed how to create work center how to change the work center how to display the work center also we saw various parameters definitions and their examples and then we saw some reports related to work centers so having understood the work centers next we will discuss the another next master data which is routing in the next session along with routing we will discuss production version also please give your feedback to improve our flow our contents to improve your career it is suggested to consider the apic certifications which are certified supply chain professional cscp certified in logistics transportation distribution cltd if you need any support because i am conducting training in this i can support you thank you all see you in the next session bye